more often than not, when we go about setting targets about anything in life, we plan it, we execute it so that we achieve it. Same goes for the investments. I'll save as much as possible, often veers towards as little as I can get away with. And that happens because we do not have a goal. How important is the goal is what we will discuss in today's Investors Hangout, brought to you by Aditya Birla, Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. With me is Devendra Kumar, CEO of Value Research. Welcome, Devendra. Thank you. It is said that um, setting goals is the first step in uh, turning the invisible into visible. How true is it? Isn't that too daunting a task? Uh, no, it is true for any task, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not only financial things. But financial thing is, you know, the saving for future, the postponed consumption. Uh, this is daunting because mm -hmm. uh, you are simply compromising on today's consumption for a future need, which you need to think about. So this, you know, this four bucket system, I would say it's actually, you know, four or five bucket system. Uh, of course, four are about investments or rather three. Uh, I'll get on to specifics, okay. otherwise I'll yes, actually so be confusing <laughs> my uh, our viewers. Uh, but you know, uh, this is actually setting a framework for uh, uh, how to go about investing. Because of course it is daunting because uh, you are postponing your consumption. And today you have plenty of uh, uh, consumption avenue. You have to right. spending avenue. Not only that, uh, this is how personal finance, you know, personal finance works. It is so against your psyche because uh, when you you know investing for the long run your invest investments to compound it needs to be invested for the long term and when you are investing in early stages you have very little saving then you know because investment follows savings and so you are unable mm. to form the habit of saving and putting it to work by way of investments so when you don't have anything so you can't really visualize the magical impact of the small saving being put to work and how right. it compounds the experiencing compounding uh, you know, just getting the theoretical understanding in your class 10th or 9th in commercial mathematics that this is the compound formula, uh, you know, uh, yeah, this is the uh, uh, way to, you know, how uh, anything compounds, that doesn't work. Uh, you have to really experience it. You have to experience it with your own money and see how it works and that mm. takes time. And when it happens with small savings, you really don't believe in it. But that is the only thing, that is the only magic which works with uh, individuals. They need to really get organized about it and getting a mental framework that how to approach it. Because many, many a times, you know, uh, everybody starts with that. He wants to invest 3000 rupees uh, and everybody wants to have maximum return in the shortest possible tenure. Uh, that is not the, a very organized framework. I think the starting point should be mm. that how much money you are able to save, how much money you are likely to need in many years. So, uh, you know, uh, having a method of allocating your money in the right way is crucial. Okay. One should not uh, procrastinate about uh, things. Yeah. One should not think, okay, as I said in my opening remark, okay, as much as possible, I'll try and save. And at the end of it, you say, okay, that I will save. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's not the way to go about it. So, what is the way to go about it? You you mentioned four, no, five buckets. So, what are yeah, these buckets? Let's yeah, get into, yeah, uh, yeah, actually, to simplify uh, things. Huh? Yeah, yeah, one can say that, you know, it's three, four or five, but I'll just explain why this confusion and why it is actually not a confusion. Okay. One is that, you know, the money that you are likely to need in many, many years, that should be your starting point. The money, and you must invest a small part. You should start with your investment, not with your savings. Because if you think in terms of, first spending and consuming the money, you will not be left with anything. That is how money is, you know, there, is, there are always, you know, more wants than, than you have it. So start with something, 5%, 10%, the money which, will, which is needed for, you know, and think in terms of really long term, in terms of five years and more, or, or you know, 20 years, 30 years, depending on, you know, planning for your retirement, saving for your retirement, and if you are going to live for 30 years. Assuming that you have no, it is not granulated yet, mm. still, allocate a part of that money so that you don't really lay your hands on that money for your child's education five seven ten years away from now putting a down payment for your house which is five seven ten years then next comes you know the money which you are likely to need in two three four years 
that is a medium term so you know choose an appropriate vehicle and the money which you are likely to consume mm -hmm. and the money which you are likely to uh, need in very near future uh, three, you know three months six months or within a year's time you need to spend that money mm -hmm. that money should be lying there that money should be lying in a very low risk avenue so allocating this mm -hmm. then the fourth and the fifth bucket about which i was little tentative and you know about that is you know you need to tax save is money earned so you should be f investing as much money which can actually save you tax so that money which is actually part of the first one that the long term money of that invest up to one and a half lakh rupee and if it is getting exhausted with your provident fund or ppa for something then think mm. in terms of think of it as a long term avenue i would say that that is the fourth bucket which is part of the first bucket itself and before that before you get on to all this mm. uh cover your ground with insurance health insurance and life insurance the one which you need and uh, if you can't afford it have the essential ones you know if you can't really afford a term insurance right now go for the accidental insurance it's a very low premium gives you adequate right. coverage right. so uh, and you know for 500 rupee 1000 rupee you can get that accident cover if you really can't get the health insurance cover look for your employer or get for you know there are many mm -hmm. relatively cheaper option which will give, provide you some offer uh, they are not and so getting a adequate you know at least minimum or you know some health cover because all your investment plans will get derailed in case of a bad health which requires hospitalization or a big expense right. mm -hmm. and of course term, yeah, there is no substitute then. for term mm -hmm. insurance because mm -hmm. uh, while you are accumulating your sav savings your family is completely uncovered if because it will take time for you to build your financial assets so that it can take care of things so that i think is i would say that that's the first bucket be conscious about it even if you can't afford it mm. think of you know cheaper alternatives to uh, to uh, to get that you know even a limited coverage so the first bucket is the immediate needs and emergency funds yes second is yeah. the medium, medium term, term. Yeah. Uh, so i i can call them uh, safely the term buckets the time buckets the time buckets hmm? the time buckets okay uh, and the third bucket you mentioned about you know uh, which of further away like yeah, seven years yeah five years more long term goals yeah, yeah. and uh, allocating that money okay within that is the tax saving one hmm. it shouldn't okay. be considered so because avail the tax saving entitlement investment as okay. much as possible and then you know based and before all this have the foundation of the insurance if you have financial dependence so where are you putting that in the fifth bucket or i would say that that is actually you know preparing the ground okay you uh, that comes first and make sure that you you don't end up with anything which is a mix of all these things make sure that you are getting a simple health insurance and a simple term cover and the fourth bucket as uh, devin said is about tax saving investments so yes. we covered yeah we, we covered it. so what about okay i've done all these uh, buckets i've planned about them i've set goals according to these buckets what's the next step the next step is that you know once you have earmarked depends on you know how much money you are left with to or you know to begin with to invest uh and you have been able to earmark hmm. then uh choose the appropriate vehicle uh your money which is needed for the immediate consumption and if it if that time frame is you know a month or you know 40 days or 50 mm. days or maybe through the month consumption and it's an immediate needs mm. that should be in a liquid fund or your savings bank account uh don't try and maximize your return there because you may if you try and maximize it if you get greedy about this you know optimizing return on that you may not have the money when you need it for this short term so that money should be handy and should yield about you know anywhere between 6 to 7% this is not a large this should not be a large amount if it is meant for a regular consumption the medium term consider a short term bond fund or ultra short term bond fund be very conservative about it because you definitely want that money when you want it to be there even in the medium term 2 3 years 4 years at most you know if it is for a negotiable goal something which you can do with 3, three years you you can well do it with two within 2 years you know uh something like buying or upgrading your car if mm. you are putting your money towards that we talked about reverse emi a few weeks back yes. uh so that kind of money then consider you know you can assume little risk there too consider a mip or a equity income fund because you are chasing a goal which if you get it in 2 years is fine if you get it in 3 and a half years is still fine uh but if it is going to be a non negotiable goal if you are actually putting that money for the 
tuition fee of the first year when your child is getting admission, don't do that. Uh, do it in a short term debt fund. It will be predictable. You will not get any okay. negative surprise. Mm. Long term money, there are two ways of going about it. If it is a tax saving bit only, if you can invest, save, no, uh, save and invest no mm. more than one and a half lakh rupee, just choose a tax saving fund and be at it. That will take care of your uh, essentials. That will take okay. care of your retirement. If you keep doing it for year after year for 15, 20 years, you will be taken care of reasonably well. The power of compounding and all equity investment and lock in for three years, which enforces discipline for investors works magically. Okay. Because the biggest problem is when we invest in equity, uh, when you see the value decline uh, in a brief period of time and uh, you have the option of taking your money out, then you panic and you are never able to you know, maximize your return or you, you are unable to stay on course. So tax saving fund is a great way of staying on course. Mm. It forces you to be there and then you end up and that, that's the way you end up uh, that being a very profitable investment. Else, first time investor, with all kind of liquidity available, you can take your money out. Always start with a balanced fund. Okay. If you have experienced the market for two, three years with a balanced fund or any anything else and gotten used to it, then go for a multi-cap fund. And don't think of any fifth option. So liquid fund for your very short-term needs, short-term mm. debt fund or equity income fund for medium-term needs. And for long-term needs, either a tax saving fund or a balanced fund for a starter or a multi-cap fund. So these five kind of funds can actually take care of most individuals' needs. Okay, and how much should it be in terms of percentage? Um, see, for emergency, it's... Um, no, you have, that the investor has to decide because okay. it entirely Is depends. Is it a ballpark figure? No. Or, or in terms of five months of your, um, you know, monthly expenditure should be in... That is the emergency formula, but mm. I would say that, you know, that also varies. You know, okay. I would say okay. that if you're in a government job, you don't have to worry about the job. In fact, the charm of government job is that you once you get it, <laughs> nobody can get rid of you. So uh, that, that's one, you know, I would say that your need for emergency or, you know, the kind of support system. So it depends. It's mm. entirely circumstantial. If you have old parents, then maybe, you know, you need higher liquidity. If you have young kids, young children, you mm. need uh, mo even more money for uh, emergency. So you anticipate that. But I would say that two, three months of consumption needs or six months of your monthly expenses should be good enough. Okay. So, five buckets. We feel that uh, you always do your best. What you plan today is going to harvest tomorrow. And this is what Dharendra is saying. Plan, plan and plan and invest and look at the future. Dharendra, um, we go on to the sure. Q&A now. And uh, Ion has written to us saying I have an FD of rupees 12 yielding 6.6% interest. Please suggest mutual fund options to get better returns. I would say that, you know, depends on his, uh, how conversant he is with the uh, thing. I would say that uh, right substitute, which will be a little more tax efficient if he's holding for three years and more, uh, which generally will be the case for a bond, uh, for, for a FD, uh, is that uh, short term bond fund will give him a reasonable return like IFT, maybe a little more. Okay. The real advantage will be that uh, if you hold it for three years, all your gains will not be treated as income. It will be treated as capital gains and uh, it will be indexed. Mm -hmm. So, it'll, you know, if your 10 rupee becomes 13 rupees uh, in three years time, then 13 rupee minus inflation will be your gains. And on okay. that gain, you have to pay only 20% of the gains post inflation inflation mm. adjusted gains will be taxed at 20 percent that is the treatment so that concessional tax treatment of the bond fund return uh, is your advantage and uh, there's another advantage of you know fixed income funds as compared to as compared to deposits of course we haven't had a scare of that kind that you are able to you know it has higher liquidity if you take your money out there is no penalization of course, you know, okay. the tax efficiency goes if you in, mm. if you redeem your money for so uh, within three years, it will be treated all the gains that have accumulated on the on your bond fund re realized within three years, uh, that will be treated as your income of that year. So, uh, but that is the case of interest income. That is how interest income from a fixed deposit is treated always. Uh, and uh, there is no TDS on mutual fund, whereas there is a ta tax deduction withholding tax on the mm. interest that you earn every year the bank is supposed mm. to deduct the tds and deposit so uh, short-term debt fund is 
a more predictable substitute if you are looking to optimize return then i would say that you know mip is the growth option which I, which can invest 15 to 20% into mm -hmm. equity or the equity income funds mm -hmm. you know they can invest 25 to 30% 35% into equity their tax efficiency has gone because earlier when equity was completely tax free but it's still concessional the, because all the returns from those funds will be tr if held for over one year will be taxed at 10% as okay. compared to your marginal tax rate mm -hmm. Okay, moving on, uh, we Balaji has written to us saying that for getting regular monthly income, can we invest 50% in debt, 30% in large cap, and 20% in mid cap, and then use systematic withdrawal plan? Else, is there a better option? Yes, there is a better option because uh, uh, try and keep it simple. Of course, this allocation is conservative, 50% equity and 50% fixed income. Uh, and 50% equity which is reasonably diversified large cap and mid cap but if you keep it simple in terms of you know having a single fund or investing in a fund from mm. which you mount a withdrawal plan uh, you have to make sure you can do it with a balanced fund with ease which will be 70% equity 70% or there are funds which are 50% equity 50% debt and you have to make only one investment or make two investments like that uh, it will be uh, less paperwork uh, the advantage of withdrawal plan is that initial years you are taking, you know, when you take your money out in the form of redemption of units, a good part comes back to you, even though all your money will be growing, but it is treated as redemption of units. So only that part which you are redeeming, mm. uh, you will be taking a part of your gains. And so the tax incidence is very low because it is considered as taking your own money back uh, from a taxation point of view. So. Uh, Doing a withdrawal plan is very tax efficient. Keeping it simple is very important. Otherwise, you will have to do the rebalancing yourself mm. over time. Many times, equity will do well and debt will not. And you will be doing a withdrawal plan from all of them equally. And then when the reverse happens, then you will be taking a part of the, you know, you're doing a withdrawal from equity while it is not doing well. So having a unified, diversified vehicle at the outset okay. will be useful. Okay. And... Uh, the cr critical thing is not this. The critical thing is that what is your withdrawal rate? If you take 10% out, if you, if you withdraw 10%, you run the risk of eating your capital, consuming your capital. Make sure that, you know, we have talked about it. What should be the withdrawal rate? I think a conservative withdrawal rate from a portfolio like this, 50% equity, 50% debt, should not exceed 5%. That is the only way to ensure that you don't consume your capital. Mm. Also ensure that over a period of time there will be appreciation left in your investments, in your investment, mm. which will make sure that you can increase your withdrawal over time. So whatever be your money, don't withdraw more than 5-6% to begin with. And every year, depending on the value of your residual investment, you can revise it periodically. And continue to withdraw 5%? Continue to withdraw 5%. But you know, if you are actually putting a crore of rupees and if you take out 5 lakh rupees this year, and after withdrawing 5 lakh rupees, the worth of your investment becomes 1 crore 10 lakh rupees. So next year, you can actually make it 6 lakh rupees. So mm -hmm. your ability okay. to ability okay. to increase your periodic mm -hmm. income, increase your withdrawal, because that will be the need. Mm -hmm. The need will be to, re to be able to increase your income with time adjusted for inflation. So this is the only way. If you okay. do not have equity, if you create an all fixed income portfolio, which many people think they should do in retirement, you run the risk of outliving your savings, which is a big risk. Mm. Okay, the next um, uh, question is from D. Ghosh and seems uh, they've been listening to a program quite regularly. You often refer to equity income funds, but he wants to know what is the difference between an equity income fund and an equity fund? Is there a okay. difference? Yeah, yeah, there is a big difference. Okay. You know, the, when and I'm, how do I know? He needs yeah, yeah. to know. How do I know it's an equity uh, yeah, income fund? Uh, of course, you know, these funds will get better formalized after the SEBI classification comes yes. into place. Mm -hmm. But when we refer to equity fund, you know the equity funds are classified as large cap, multi cap, mid small cap, cap, small cap, mm -hmm. tax saving fund. These equity funds are classified in the hybrid category. They are actually hybrid fund. These funds have 33% into equity. They are almost like a, this is somewhat like a balanced fund. They, they get slotted in the balance, you know, hybrid category or as we mm -hmm. classify on our website. One third of the money is in equity. 
one third of the money is in fixed income and one third of the money is in equity derivatives it is in futures so the tax treatment of these funds is like that of equity but the character of this fund is like two third is fixed income and one third is equity so they are very conservative equity mm -hmm. fund they are conservative okay. allocation fund they are meant for investors who are not willing because when you look at the balance fund those those funds are you know nearly two third or maybe three fourth into equity they are almost like an equity fund these are almost like an like a fixed income fund but the nature the tax uh, configuration of these funds is such that it is treated as equity fund uh, so these are equity income funds uh, mm -hmm. they are more conservative they are not they are not like equity fund which is 100% e invested in equity equity okay dhanwaj writes uh, india mein mutual funds par hi zyada focus kyun hai uh, jabki index funds zyada aur sure returns dete hain नहीं दिस इज फाइन इंडिया में म्यूचुअल फंड्स ज़्यादा पॉपुलर इसलिए हैं क्योंकि इंडेक्स फंड्स का जो रिटर्न है वो तीन साल पाँच साल दस साल पंद्रह साल की अवधि में इंडेक्स uh, फंड से ज़्यादा बेहतर जो एक्टिवली मैनेज म्यूचुअल फंड है उनका प्रदर्शन रहा है किसी भी फंड को अगर आप देखें जिसका कि पाँच साल से ज़्यादा का ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड है वो बहुत आसानी से इंडेक्स से ज़्यादा रिटर्न दे पाते हैं तो भविष्य में ऐसा हो सकता है hmm. कि इंडेक्स फंड का प्रदर्शन बेहतर हो आ, लेकिन अभी जो स्थिति है कि 80-90 प्रतिशत फंड तीन साल से ज़्यादा अवधि पे ज़्यादा समय में इंडेक्स को बहुत आसानी से बीट कर पाते हैं और आ, इस वजह से इंडेक्स फंड भारत में पॉपुलर नहीं हो पाए हैं केवल डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज में आ, अगर हम देखें जहाँ पे बाजार काफ़ी इफिशेंट है और मुझे लगता है कि भारत में बहुत आसानी से इंडेक्स फंड्स पॉपुलर नहीं होंगे कुछ इंडेक्स फंड हाल फिलहाल बड़े हुए हैं हाल फिलहाल बड़े हुए हैं उसका कारण कुछ और है इसलिए नहीं कि इंडेक्स फंड अच्छा कर रहे हैं इसलिए क्योंकि प्रोविडेंट फंड का ई का पैसा उसमें जा रहा है ई okay. में शायद उनको आसान तरीका लगता है इक्विटी में पार्टिसिपेट करने के लिए इंडेक्स फंड में लगाना लेकिन इंडेक्स अगर आप इक्विटी से बेहतर रिटर्न चाहते हैं तो इंडेक्स फंड में पैसा लगाना बेहतरीन जरिया नहीं है उसके उसके उसका मुझे लगता है ढेर सारे कारण हैं कभी किसी अन्य कार्यक्रम में हम लोग इस पर विस्तार से चर्चा करेंगे कि भारत में इंडेक्स फंड अच्छा क्यों नहीं करते हैं बट सिंपली पुट अगर रिटर्न uh, कहाँ से बेटर आ रहे हैं तो वहीं जाना चाहिए जी हाँ बिल्कुल एक फंड मैनेजर का बहुत एक्टिव रोल है एक फंड मैनेजर ये चुनाव करता है कि किस में वो निवेश करे क्योंकि फंड मैनेजर के पास बहुत मामूली विकल्प है आ, कि अगर वो कुछ चीज़ को अवॉइड करता है और किसी चीज़ में ज़्यादा पैसा लगाता है यही उसके पास औजार है ज़्यादा रिटर्न देने का और मुझे लगता है कि भारत में ये कर पाना काफ़ी आसान रहा है म्यूचुअल फंड मैनेजर्स के लिए ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम रूपेश एंड इज आई वॉन्ट टू एक्यूमुलेट टेन लैक्स इन द नेक्स्ट थ्री ईयर्स for initial uh, payment for buying a home will uh, be okay, will it be okay if he invests 25000 rupees per month uh, and then uh, achieve this yes he will be getting very close to that with his own capital yeah. uh, in fact if he needs uh, 10 lakh rupees and he is investing you know 3 lakh rupees in a year's time then he can choose a very conservative vehicle but i would say that you know it is good to you know assume little risk maybe consider an equity income fund you can because this is not a, this is not a very rigid goal mm. if you have if you can actually get that money early in two and a half years time which is good if it takes little longer that's also not going to disrupt your plans so, you know three to you know two to four years time frame possible that you get it in two and if you can do it in four years time and if you are able to put a larger down payment mm. uh, just why not, not uh, yeah, uh, then yeah. why not mm. uh, because in next 3 years if you are going to you know 25000 rupees a month is 3 lakh rupees annual investment 3 years it will be 9 lakh even a short even a bank recurring deposit will actually turn that money mm. if you invest in a equity income fund or a balanced fund or you know even a post office uh, you know the, the the mip the monthly income plan of a mutual fund the growth option i'm hopeful that you know it will be able to beat fixed income return uh which will be you know about 7 8% at least mm. uh generating 20 25% more more return you will have a much larger down payment in 3 to 4 years time uh, the only downside is that you know once while you get started sometimes you will see little more vol volatility but it's not extreme volatility only 10 to 15 or 20% of your money will be in equity and because you will be averaging it over the next 3 years your risk gets marginalized substantially mm. um Next is uh, Gagan. He says, "I'm investing for a goal which is 15 years away. 
I think this is the fourth yep. bucket. <laughs> okay. Uh, but when 10 years have passed and the goal is only four to five years away, how should I de-risk the money? Uh, depends what the goal is. Uh, if it is going to be your retirement, mm. then maybe, you know, the way to de-risk is, you know, two years of annual expenses should be put in fixed income. Okay. Uh, so, or you have, you have invested money and maybe, you know, do it in a tranche of every year. So, three years before, take one year's annual income requirement and put that in fixed income and keep doing it every year. Uh, as and when so you will be ahead of time you will be two three years ahead of time so you will not be dependent on the market to realize the money okay. which which may be to your disadvantage mm. and you know you when you have two three years of time frame in hand then you can keep doing it periodically whenever you find comfortable it amounts to a little bit of timing but you know it's not perfect timing whenever you think that you know you have enough money mm. and uh, take your money out maybe a year two year be before that this is a simple de-risking the other way of de-risking is that, and if it is for any other goal, mm -hmm. uh, then maybe plan it a little more methodically. Uh, child's education, first year's tuition fee, have it in fixed income a year before you need it. Uh, second year's tuition fee, again a year before. So you don't necessarily need to act, take the money out whenever you, whenever you are likely to need it. Uh, the way you accumulate gradually it is important that you deaccumulate. you know, you realize it gradually because averaging helps there too. And, re you know, the reason why we always suggest, I keep recommending that, you know, move your money gradually, even if you have lump sum money, that is to eliminate the possibility of catching a market peak. Okay. Likewise, don't wait for the last, uh, last minute because if that happens to be a market trough, uh, then uh, you know, avoiding that is important. Yeah. So once you are you know bringing some kind of averaging mechanism to your investment as well as withdrawal hmm. do you do you need a planner for all this or a person can do it on its on on like uh, he can a uh, gagan can do it on his own in the sense okay two years he's he's seeking your advice surely but uh, two years before he should uh, take out money i mean what kind what goes into it uh, some plain arithmetic and common sense so you can do it on and a piece goal. and goal of course mm -hmm. and you know and there can't be a of course if you have a planner handy and if you have a very complex uh, thing and if you have built a legacy then maybe a planner will help uh, but uh, financial planning is all about common sense and i think there is nobody more interested nobody who has more skin in the business you know more, uh, nobody who has greater interest in your well-being than yourself yourself well said uh, GN Badia has written for a long term horizon of 20 years or more. Is a mid, uh, multi cap fund uh, better or a small cap fund? Uh, there are different ways of looking at it. Multi cap gets you greater diversification, mm. they don't crumble. Small caps are, you know, they are very volatile asset class. Small caps tend to be far more rewarding on a 10, 15, 20 year period, 5, 10, 15 year period. Okay. Uh, but they can also be you know very unnerving hmm. when markets go down small caps fall five percent while a multi cap will fall you know three percent so you have to really find your i would say that if you are if you're not relatively new to the markets new to market linked investment start with a balanced fund which is even more that it is multi asset yes, yes. you know stable hmm. uh, if you have been in the market move to multi cap if you have understood and if you are fine with the ups and downs of the small caps by all means invest in small caps they okay. will definitely prove to be far more rewarding uh, the small cap funds also you know present a very compelling case they are much better investment vehicle than investing in small cap stocks directly yourself hmm. it is uh, uh, they they there is a quality filter applied you know the the universe of small cap stocks will be about 2500 listed in the market but the mutual fund managers invest in only about 500 of them. Mm. So best, the rest of them, you know, the elimination itself is a great value add. Mm. The liquidity of the small caps, many a times, of course, individual investors may not have that disadvantage. But in a bad market, small caps become illiquid. But your mutual funds remain liquid all the time. Whenever you need the money, you can take your money out by putting a request before three o'clock. But I would say that if you're a regular investor, believer in equity, can withstand ups and downs, small caps are a good option, but it's not for everyone.
again your need your goal to define your everything. tolerance your because tolerance. you know yeah. experiencing the tolerance is very different from just getting an academic reference if you tell somebody in a rising market that if you lose 20% of your money how comfortable you will be he'll say i'll be fine but when he you are faced with a situation of you know losing 20% your 100 rupee becoming 80 rupee after the gain uh, you are not as comfortable so saying is different you know investors thinking mm-hmm. is malleable it changes with time mm-hmm. and 20% money which could have been realized and kept in your pocket can't be realized today at least notionally is uh, not mm-hmm. a very comfortable feeling so the secret of getting ahead is getting started that's all we have in uh, today's uh, 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 investor hangout uh, make sure that you follow the advice that virendra has given to you and continue to plan and continue to invest till we meet next time it's goodbye from all of us